Uh, so the next speaker of the session is Adam Pichiro Bonfil, and he's gonna he's from the University of Waterloo as well, and he is going to talk about uncovering the thermodynamics of quantum fields. Adam, I'm going to give you 12 minutes and two minutes warning before the end of your talk, and whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Carolina. Uh, so thank you. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I'm going to be presenting about this topic. Uh, which I have been working on uh, together with Eduardo Martin Martinez and Jose Polo Gomez. And so first of all, uh, let's begin with presenting the two uh, fields that we'll be pairing throughout the presentation. Uh, first of all, there is thermodynamics, which has a 200 year old history and its rules seem to apply universally. So they apply from steam engines to black holes. And on the other hand, we have quantum fields, uh, which also have thermodynamic phenomena, uh, such as, for example, having particle detectors that thermalize due to the Andrew effect, or the information loss, a black hole information paradox. But we have no developed, truly developed thermodynamics for quantum fields. Uh, because the concepts of thermodynamics are actually difficult to complicated to bring to quantum fields. And that's what we'll be looking on today. So one thing that we can do is to adapt uh, concepts from the uh, field of quantum thermodynamics, which is an emerging field right now. And first of all, we need to work on to the which quantities we'll be interested in. These are the thermodynamic quantities such as internal energy, work, heat, or information or entropy. And, but when we measure these quantities, we find out that even though repeating the same experiment exactly, uh, the outcomes of these quantities each time will have a different, will give out a different amount. So we'll have a probability of getting different amount of, of, of these quantities. So we'll have to use probability distributions. And these probabilities come because of two sources. Uh, one of them is that uh, fluctuations due to statistics, statistical fluctuations, and the other just come from quantum physics. You have quantum fluctuations just because of having a superposition and measuring the superposition. So with this out of the way, we'll be looking onto the defining work. Uh, so the setup we'll be considering is that we have a unitary evolution uh, this uh, allows us to consider that there is no heat exchange. Uh, all the energy that exchanges should be work. And so even in this uh, restricted scenario, turns out that quantum thermodynamics provides us multiple definitions of work, uh, of fluctuating work. And uh, it, this is not a coincidence. It turns out that there is a recent Novo theorem by Marty Perrin and Olivet, which tells us that there is no definition of quantum work that would have all the properties that we would expect from classical work. So we have to take a choice. And the choice that is usually taken is the two-point measurement scheme or for work. I'm gonna give a brief uh, overview of how this uh, work is obtained or measured. Uh, first of all, start with your state. And we will measure the energy of our initial state, having an outcome, EI. Then we perform with a process uh, on our state that we want it to be a unitary. And when we finish, we measure again the energy, obtaining uh, energy EF. So taking the difference, uh, this is the change in energy of our, of our uh, state, of our system. And since we are considering no heat due to unitary evolution, all the energy will be work. That's what this equation basically tells us. And this quantity is the one that the two-point measurement scheme uh, is saying that uh, the amount of work it's saying that has been performed. So this quantity, each time that we repeat the measurement, uh, we repeat the experiment, sorry, uh, we will measure a different amount of work. So this, uh, we get a probability. So this two-point measurement scheme, I'm going to say more things about it, uh, which is that actually uh, it works very well for quantum thermodynamics, but when we go for quantum fields, uh, the two-point measurement scheme is ill-defined. 
as I said before, we use projective measurements to measure the energy, and these have complications in quantum uh, field thermodynamics. I sorry for quantum field theory. Uh, as Sorkin pointed out, uh, these measurements can bring causality violations. So we need an alternative, and this alternative, for instance, is the Ramsey scheme, which also was proposed in quantum thermodynamics, actually because it was uh, very good to perform uh, experimental measurement of how much work happens in a process. And I, it was used because it actually recovers the two-point measurement scheme for certain states, for states that are diagonal in the energy eigenbasis. And the very good thing about this Ramsey scheme is that there is a way to make it well-defined for quantum fields. Uh, we can use particle detectors uh, coupled to the field to measure this uh, word distribution uh, that comes out of the Ramsey scheme. This was done in a research group by Alvaro Ortega and other members of our group. So uh, next, I'm going to go a step further and look into the first law of thermodynamics, because it turns out that the TPM scheme does not actually fulfill the first law of thermodynamics. So energy and work, even taking the average, do not coincide. The energy increase, sorry, and work do not coincide. So, but actually there is a way that we had looked at at the past and to how the first law can be brought to quantum fields and be fulfilled in average. Instead of using the TPM scheme, we use the quasi-probability for distributions. So these quasi-probabilities, uh, in contrast to probabilities which are always positive, these can have negative values. And these negative values, for instance, typically they signal quantum effects as in the Wigner distribution. And the nice thing about these quasi-probability distributions for work is that they can be measured, again, by using particle detectors coupled to the field. So they can be well-defined for quantum field theory, uh, bringing us the, a first law that, that is uh, fulfilled. Because these probability distributions, sorry, they didn't mention, they do fulfill the first law of thermodynamics. So next, we'll look into adding heat into the mix. Uh, there is uh, one approach that we can take, which is followed by Defner and Ozdiski, uh, that consists on splitting between work reservoirs and heat reservoirs. For instance, in these images here, uh, we can have a piston connected to a rope and a mass that only exchanges work with our quantum system. Or we could have a thermal bath that, like this one here, that can only exchange heat with our quantum system. And uh, in this way, each time that we have an energy exchange, we know whether it's work or heat. We have a clear definition. But we could want to go beyond uh, having to split between work and heat in this way, different subsystems. And there is actually a formalism that we are exploring that was proposed by one of my collaborators, Jose Polo Gomez, and for defining heat and work without the need of this split. And moreover, this formalism can fulfill the first law of thermodynamics uh, without the need of take, to take uh, an average, even as, a, as an equality of probability distributions. So we are hoping that uh, we're going to have a preprint, a preprint soon about this work. And also we have the job to adapt this distribution uh, to apply for quantum fields. So next, another tool that we can use is observational entropy. So entropy usually uh, reflects uh, how irreversible a process is. For instance, here the free expansion uh, is an irreversible process, but actually uh, free expansion, ideally, uh, the gas is not interacting, interacting with any other system. So its evolution would be unitary. And this would mean that von Neumann entropy, for instance, would be constant, which is completely in opposite to our intuition, in opposition to our intuition. So uh, here, observational entropy comes into play, because uh, observational entropy considers that we are that we can coarse grain 
the space of states. That, for instance, we have a limited ability to tell uh, properties about our system. For instance, we could only say here that whether how many particles are on the left and how many particles are in the right. By considering this, then observational entropy uh, does actually increase in this type of situations, as in the free expansion, uh, as was shown by Safranek et al. in this article here. So actually, observational entropy has the really good feature that it was also recently shown that can be used to give a second law of thermodynamics and starting from microscopics of quantum theory. Um, but uh, when we try to bring it into quantum fields, there is some complications that we have to address. And these are that we have to handle the infinite dimension uh, that we have on quantum fields, on the space of states, which can bring divergences in the observational entropy. And we also need to use uh, POVM, so positive operator valued measurements to define the course readings instead of defining projectors, which is the usual way that we would do so. Two minutes. Oh, thank you. So, well, uh, just we'll conclude. Um, uh, the going over what we have seen, first of all, the quantum field theory, we saw that it would benefit from having uh, thermodynamics that we can use to explore its phenomena. And actually quantum thermodynamics uh, can provide us tools to explore this phenomena and define concepts of thermodynamics. However, the field of quantum thermodynamics is still young. And it's also still growing at the same time, it's growing rapidly. Uh, but, but so we need to adapt the concepts that it has to quantum field theory. And that's actually what we're doing on our next steps is trying to define what is fluctuating work and heat for quantum fields, and also exploring uh, the second law of thermodynamics for fields. And with this, I want to thank you all, and I finish my presentation here. Okay. Yes, so you mentioned that the, you have this project about uh, discussing the first law of thermodynamics at the level of uh, probability distributions. Yeah. Uh, not on only on average values, right? Yes. So, so this would uh, basically like this still have to to write it down and and send it. But basically, this would mean like having probability distributions that. Uh, sorry. The problem is. Uh, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what to talk about. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let, let me let me say something more concrete. Um. So, the well, the, the first law and all the stuff is mostly something that happens at the level of having state functions, right? Something that has some macroscopic uh, quantities that determine a macroscopic system. And then what you one one assumes is okay. I have this system, then undergo some transformation, an equilibrium transformation, and ends up in this other state. That says, let's say, this volume, this pressure, uh, this temperature. So I understand that the, yeah, the level of uh, average values it makes sense that this holds, but the level of the whole probability distribution. Uh, I have more problems because imagine I see that I give you the yeah the for instance I have a system uh, and I give you the uh, probability distribution of uh, having some macroscopic uh, uh, quantities whatever so the fact that this is a state function for me would mean that it doesn't matter by which process you come to that kind of state, right? Uh, but uh, okay. imagine now that I give you the same system and I transform this very system. Then uh, for there's going to be but like uh, if uh, they say the transformation takes very little time at the level of the probability distribution, the system is going to be correlated with itself. Uh, 
So, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's a, at the level of probability distributions, there are things that happen that don't happen at the level of the averages. And I wonder what is the way you were tackling that. Right, so yeah, I don't even it. know if it's possible. Yeah, that's, I see. Yeah, thanks. That's a very good question. I, so indeed, at the level of the averages, there are many things that you're ignoring. So it's uh, easier to get the first law. Um, so the question is, yeah, when you go to giving it in terms of probability distributions, you just need you need to have a, I would say you need to have a probability distribution that is a joint distribution of heat and work. And uh, then at the same time, the, 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 the sum of these quantities should give you the, the increase in energy of the system. So we are looking at a formalism that would allow us to give this probability. Um, the quantity in each of the repetitions of the experiment, uh, being able to the sum of what it would be work and what it would be heat equal to the energy increase. So it's more difficult than the average, but I think we, by doing a formalism, we could do it. So maybe, so maybe, 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 maybe I'll come here. Yeah. So a very quick note. So again, this question is difficult to answer. I mean, it's, it's the, uh, oh, I don't see. It's muted the people. Oh, it's not muted also. It's not muted, no, but I don't see people, Jose. Are you don't see me? Uh, now I do. I do. Perfect. I do see you. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. So, so the thing, the question becomes difficult because as you formulated it, I think the answer is, is yes. No, you're not going to get the first law to all moments. However, what we're trying to do is an opposite. It's a different approach, right? Is how do we formulate it in order to get a first law in the probability distribution kind of system? But that also that goes into okay. What do we call work and what would we call heat? What uh, what is the dynamics with the environment? The interaction with the environment. Not in particular, but in hmm. general, what should we call the environment? How should we study the influence of the person doing the experiment? Let's say, or the, or the person, I mean, the, the way in which you act in the system, right? So basically, it's kind of an inverse approach in that sense. Hmm. It's like, sure, if you define it in the as you were talking about, sure, there are going to be many problems that you're not going to have, gonna have a first law, but it's kind of the opposite. To try to define a, a definition of, of a distribution of, of heat, we say, okay, we have a distribution of work, we have a distribution of internal energy. Um, and um, and uh, what would that mean if we were to satisfy the probability level? What would that mean for a distribution of heat? And how should we interpret that in terms of what a system does it make sense to interpret it like that? You know, that, that's what we're looking at. So it's kind of the inverse question, rather. Okay. Trying to start from a definition uh, that is getting the classical one for quantum systems, we are hmm. changing the definition. And that's the approach that we'll say that Jose um, uh, came up with, is, is changing the definition a little bit. Okay. So if I understand, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So if I understand correctly, the the idea is that the yeah the goal or like the spirit in which you're doing this is to try to define heat and work at the level of uh, probability distributions because it's Precise. complicated to do that otherwise. Precisely. So uh, okay, I'm just gonna say something. I know that he what heat is and what work uh, is in some situations, right? Like. Uh, it's, I think what is le legitimate to argue that maybe outside these situations it cannot be defined. So the idea is that whatever we define has to be heat that you know in those situations that you have a pure heat phenomenon and has to be work okay. in those situations that you have a pure work phenomenon. And we know that it is. That's right. And that we know that we haven't but we know that it is. So the construction that we're doing works for those mm. cases. Now, the contrived stuff, otherwise, we wouldn't, it's not acceptable, obviously. The idea is to try mm. to define a notion of probability distribution for heat when uh, you are outside of those cases. So when you have a not clearly following a path between two points, a path that is pure work or a path that is pure heat, when you go like this, can you talk about heat and can you talk about work? That's what we're trying to define. In fact, so, the, but in, I mean, in, in, for, in, oh, Jose, yes, sir. You are Jose. Yes, sir. No, just, uh, just to clarify, like maybe uh, we we'll check. It can give you some uh, a certain idea of uh, uh, in, uh, the way in which uh, it is more general, uh, as uh, Eduardo was saying. Because, for example, the you know the Jasinski equality is not satisfied for arbitrary processes uh, with the, the definitions mm -hmm. of here, but it is satisfied when we restrict the processes to processes in which we usually know what's heat and what's work. 
you see? But then, it, but, but then we, when you consider just arbitrary unitary processes, then it turns out that it's not satisfied. And it makes sense that it's not because of what, for other... Yeah, for, yeah. Do you see in this... In this yeah, sense, so it, that's kind of in the spirit of what I, what I thought first, because even... So the hit and work are things that are uh, based on the, the conservation of energy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> and also... It depends, right? Some people would say that it's a practical definition. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, in, well, in fact, I mean, so you have a state function, and then you want to split the state function in a part that has some properties and a part that has other properties, right? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I mean, so what I wonder is even more basic. It's like, is the energy a state function in general for all moments? Um, no, there is not because uh, precisely the um, one of the key points of the of the um, of the formalism that we have is that uh, I mean and in, for that we have we have no, we we had already no coherence right that tell us that if we only consider the system alone and we try to formulate things just in terms of what happens to the systems the, to the system then there is no way we are going to fulfill the uh, the first law and so on uh, to higher moments so we knew that that approach couldn't work. So the key point of uh, the formalizing is that you have to get the environment involved, Correct. and that's uh, mm. that's the key parts. And when you get it and you do it properly in a, in a well, in a more or less clever way, it turns out that you can you can actually get the first law to be fulfilled in probabilities. It's not just in the moments, but of course, if you try to formulate everything just in terms of the of the system, uh, then <laughs> there's a um, mm. you can't say that you're not gonna get it. That's kind of what I meant in the chat, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're not gonna get. Yeah, no, I mean, so, yeah. So this this is very cool. Um, so I I was also wondering. Um, okay, I guess that the at least when whenever heat is involved, the uh, there has to be a role played by quasi quasi static processes, right? In all this business, mm. because uh, so imagine that I give you. A system in which I know what the, that there's like an exchange of heat. For instance, I give you a system and I, uh, I don't know, open the system very slowly and interact with a the thermal bath, and then the system thermalizes. I know that there's been an exchange of heat from the with the environment, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is like a the, this is also a closed cycle because the, all the parameters that you had in the beginning are the same as in the end. So it's like kind of like an adiabatic cycle. That is uh, with an open system. I know that this is hit. Well, was... What do you mean by it? So maybe we could move the discussion to Slack. Um, uh, yeah, you, you, sure, sure. I, mean, I, don't know, like... I don't know how long this uh, thing would take. Yeah, we can talk about this. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you.